Welcome back to Sunrise Daily World. Today we start our discussions focusing on Adamawa State and uh, lots of things going on. I mean, in the papers today you saw that part about the courts and uh, impeachment notices here and there. We're joined now to talk about this by Dr. Umar Aldo, who is a former PDP governorship aspirant in Adamawa State and also the Executive Secretary, Center for Alternative Policy Perspectives and Strategy. Morning, I thank you for coming this morning, Doctor. Thank you, Sambala. Well, all of this, because before now, even when that news broke that the court had, uh, uh, with that latest decision, some also have it that, well, look, it, the House of Assembly are in violation of a subsisting court order, and then they went ahead and published the allegations against the governor. What's going on in Adamawa? Uh, well, the House was not in violation of uh, the court order by publishing. What happened was that the House met on the 18th of June and uh, uh, made charges against the governor and then directed the clerk of the House to serve the governor and the deputy governor. The clerk went to the uh, governor's office. He wasn't there. He went to the deputy governor's office. He wasn't there. He went to their houses. Uh, they were not there. So instead of the clerk to come back to the house and uh, report, the clerk uh, then uh, approach the court. Now, if you look at the affidavit that the clerk signed, there is nowhere in that affidavit where he said to the court that I was authorized to come before the court. So he went to the court, and uh, the court then said he, uh, they had to give the governor and the deputy governor service by hand. Now. This is a very uh, an, an impossible order because a person who is surrounded by, uh, by armed security men, you can see him only if he wants to see you. So the clerk then went back to the house and then reported to the house and the house had the powers to order for substituted service and that was what the house did. And the flow of the house, by re a resolution of the majority in the house, they pass uh, an... Uh, <clears throat> an order that they should publish it as a substituted service, which they did. Now, after which the courts came and uh, halted the process. But I can tell you yesterday, the same court re uh, reversed its, the two orders, the order of uh, uh, halting the uh, uh, processes and also the order that it must be given to him hand to hand. So I, I, I don't see much of a violation of the court order. It's a proceeding. And if you look at section 188 of, uh, of the Constitution of section 10, it stated very clearly that in the proceedings and determination of the panel, or the proceeding and determination of the House of Assembly, or any matter relating to it in whatsoever way, that no court can determine it or can question it. So these things, they are very clear, they are unequivocal, and they don't really need you know, for you to have a legal mind you know, to interpret. So I don't think the House had uh, violated any court order. What about the, those allegations? Because now that that matter is already in court, shouldn't they have waited until that is sorted out before they go ahead and do what it did? What did they do? The allegations that were, were first published before the matter was even going to, uh, I mean, they were first charged before the matter was taken to court. It was after the allegations were, were, uh, were made that the entire court issue started coming up. And in fact, you can say that it is the court that violated the provisions of the Constitution by going into an issue that it ought not to have gone into. So there is not anything in that state that... Uh, that, that we violated. We are, it's democracy in action. And besides, whatever you see in those allegations, they've been there. So the House is just doing its job and the courts and everybody should, should allow the House to do its job. It would seem that communication between the House uh, is, and the executive arm of government in Adamawa State has broken down. Yes. The question will be why. Is this, more, is this reflecting the politics at the national level, which some people suspect, or this is actually what is going on in Adamawa State as the, the House is publishing? Uh, well, you know, people make their own insinuations when they say things. I have heard so severally people say that uh, it is being engineered from outside. People say that it is uh, maybe the presidency or the party at the national level because the governor left the party. That's why they are doing so. No. 
You see, the impeachment of the governor started way back in July 2008. In July 2008, the same House of Assembly served the governor with impeachment notice. At that time, the governor was PDP, full PDP. And the, the issue was resolved actually by the House remaining docile. The House left the matter to die down without it uh, calling on the, uh, the governor to reply and without the governor replying and without the House taking it further to the, to the uh, chief judge of the state. How did that happen? Well, you see, in 2008, the uh, governor when uh, you see, everything uh, is politics. The governor in 2008, we were to do local government elections, local government primaries. So he sat down in his house, as always, with his own party, and then they wrote the list of all the councillors and, uh, and chairmen without any co conducting any election. People like us, we said, no. This is what the provision of the party constitution says. Yes. You so must he was so. in PDP at the time? Yes, he was in PDP, 2008. He was just re-elected, actually, uh, uh, in April. So we insisted that he should uh, conduct primaries. He refused. So some of us, I, I particularly, led some members of the House of Assembly to the National Secretariat of the PDP. We led a complaint before the National Secretariat, and uh, the, uh, the National Secretariat called the governor and the members, but the governor would not want to listen. So the members then issued him an impeachment notice. Now, the impeachment notice then uh, was, uh, they, they called for a meeting, uh, President uh, um, uh, then, and they set up a committee, which was headed by the vice president then, Bullock Jonathan, today president, and they asked the vice president in that meeting, although they refused me in that meeting, but I knew the proceedings of the meeting. They said, okay, go ahead, conduct the primaries, and then uh, we, you, do, uh, we, you withdraw the impeachment notices. But the governor refused to conduct those uh, primaries. It is only in my local government that when we insisted that he went there to conduct the primaries, and then we defeated him on the ground. Which so, local government is that? That is the local government okay. area. So we defeated his candidate on the ground. Other than that, all the remaining 20 local government areas, the governor did exactly as he wanted. So, you see, the, the destruction of electionary system, constitutionalism, and uh, entrenchment of impunity by the state government is responsible to what we are facing in Adamawa today. So that was in 2008, 2008, yes. 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 13, 13, 14. 14. Yes. That's Good seven years yes. after, what exactly has happened? Because if somebody has the pension for impunity, it, it means that the people of Adamawa have lived, either lived with impunity for seven years, you know, since 2008, or that, you know, he's been very well behaved until now. What exactly has changed? No, it is people in Adamawa said have lived with impunity. And, but, but not that they accepted impunity, because people in Adamawa have been fighting this impunity for the past six, seven years. We've been fighting it. It is now that it has reached a crescendo that uh, uh, we, uh, we, we are where we are. Can you tell us some of the instances where they can, they could, they can show through the instrument of the House of Assembly mm. that they were fighting impunity? Well, uh, you see, the fight against impunity uh, is not basically in the House alone. Politicians and uh, members of the party have been fighting. Personally, like me, I went to about five courts to go up to the Supreme Court to fight the impunity in that state. But the, the courts have not been very forthcoming. Either the court will uh, look for uh, a way to kick your, uh, your case out. For example, we fought, I, there were no primaries. I contested with the governor in 2011 and 2012, and there were no primaries. The, the party primary stated very clearly that A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. These are the processes through which primaries are conducted. We did A, B, C, D, then the governor and the party jumped E and F and then went to G. I said, no, you have to go to G, uh, uh, you have to do uh, E and F before we go to G. They refused and I went to court, but what did the court say? The court said that I did not participate, therefore I do not even have a locus to, uh, to challenge a process. While the provision of the Electoral Act is very clear, it said that if an aspirant believes that the provision of the Electoral Act or 
the party constitution or the party guidelines have been breached in the process of contest of, of nomination, he should go to court. He should go to either federal high court, state high court, or FCT high court. I went to uh, federal high court. The federal high court said, I do not have locals. How? I bought forms, filled them, returned them. Um, uh, the, the party set up a screening committee. I was screened and cleared. My name was put on the ballot paper. And then I went, uh, we went for the primaries, uh, for the primaries to, con to elect the three ad hoc delegates, which is a, a, a process, a condition precedent before you go for the final nomination. But at the end of the day, the courts at the Supreme Court level, for that matter, said that I did not participate fully. So, so I wanted to see how we participate fully. So it is the courts, actually, that encourage impunity so that uh, politicians like my governor uh, allow this the to happen. The yeah, most definitely. We, we have to be wow. careful when we say that. <laughs> well, I, I, this, I know it because I went through the process. There is nothing for me to hide in this, in the, in this instance.